السلام عليكم انا زين زياني صاحبة جرو ليرنينج سبيس وحبينا اليوم نتكلم عن كيف ممكن نكتب خطة عمل لفكرة مشروع عندنا وطبعا هاي بيكون اول فيديو تعليمي اسويه مع مؤسسة المباراة الخليفية وتشرف نحن بهالشراكة الفيديو بيكون بالانجليزي وبالعربي فان شاء الله تستفيدون Uh, my name is Zainal Zayani and I'm going to be talking to you about how to write a business plan. So if you have a business idea, how can you transform that into reality? And this video is brought to you by a partnership that we're very proud of between Grow Learning Space and Al Mabar Al Khalifiya Foundation. And we really hope you enjoy and benefit from what we have planned for you today. So we're going to start with a quote from Richard Branson, who is a serial entrepreneur and a billionaire, um, saying a big business starts small. طبعا ريتشارد برانسون صاحب مشاريع كثيرة وقال مقولة إن كل مشروع يبتدي صغير. Another quote we have from Steve Jobs: If you don't love it, you're going to fail. طبعا الكل يعرف ستيف جوبز والمقولة تقول إن إذا ما حبيتوا الشيء ما بتنجحون فيه. I have a business idea. Okay, now what? عندي الفكرة. زين وبعدين شنو لازم أسوي؟ A goal without a plan is just a wish. This is a very important um, statement. فكرة بدون خطة مجرد أمنية. حب نعرف ليش. So why do we need a business plan? There are six reasons. Reason number one: It helps you steer your business as you start. It's a outcome. في بداية رحلتكم في المشروع. It helps you steer your business as you grow. So not only when you start, but also as you grow. It helps reach business milestones. المراحل الأساسية اللي ممكن المشروع يمر فيها. It avoids big mistakes. It ساعد كم إنه ما تسوون أغلاط. It secures financing if you are requesting it or needing it. It reduces risk. Now the business plan. الحين نتكلم عن خطة العمل. The business plan has eight main sections. You'll find lots of them online, but trust me, these eight are what you need. So number one, executive summary. Number two, company overview. Number three, products and or services. Number four, market analysis. Number five, strategy and implementation plan. Number six, management. Number seven is the financial plan, which is the most important section. And number eight is the appendix. We're going to go over each of these sections, and then we're actually going to go and fill out a template that we have shared at the bottom of this video. So in this section, the executive summary, you're going to talk about several things. You're going to introduce your company. ففي هالملخص نشرح شوي عن الشركة. What products or services are you going to provide? شنو المنتجات والخدمات اللي بتقدمونها? Who will you be selling to? من هما زباينكم? What are your short and long-term goals? So what are your one to two year goals and your three to five year goals? And what makes you unique? شنو اللي خليكم أحسن من غيركم? So the second section is the company overview. And in this section, you're going to talk about the structure of the company, the ownership. So if you have more than one owner, who are the key employees, what the location is. Mission statement also goes here. And startup expenses. So whenever you see this little light bulb, it means we have a template that we're going to talk about later. فطبعا بيكون عندنا المصاريف اللي بن بنواجهها قبل لا نفتح وهاي بيكون في الستارت اب اكسبنسز. The third section of the business plan is product and services والجزء الثالث طبعا هو الخدمات والمنتجات. هني بنذكر كل اللي بن بنبيعه. We're going to list all the major products and services. What are their important features and benefits? What's the pricing strategy? Is it going to be cost-based? Is it going to be competition-based? Or is it going to be value-based? And then we're also going to talk about um, the product's life cycle. 
throughout this, the different um, phases. So I'm going to talk about كيف ممكن نسعر منتجاتنا وخدماتنا وبعد نحط في بالنا المراحل اللي بمر فيها أو بتمر فيها خدماتنا ومنتجاتنا. So the fourth section of the business plan is market analysis. This is where all your market research goes. أو كل بحوثات ودراسات اللي عندنا إياها عن السوق. فهو so who's your target? Who are you targeting? What are their characteristics? من اللي إحنا مستهدفينهم أي فئة؟ شنو المواصفات؟ Um, how much market share can we gain? What do we know about the industry that we're going to be operating in? And most importantly, what do you know about your competitors? Men ahma اللي نفسونا وشنو عندنا معلومات عنهم هاي القسم وايد مهم في خطة العمل. Section five is strategy and implementation plan. So here um, we're going to talk about our marketing strategy. What are the different? How are we going to communicate to customers? And what are the different tactics that we will be using? فشنو عندنا اللي هي استراتيجية التسويق حق ال حق المشروع? What are what is our sales strategy? Will we have a sales force? هل بيكون عندنا فريق مبيعات? What are our sales activities? شنو عندنا هما ال النشاطات اللي ممكن إنه um, and Zaid Minna Biatna, Utabran Sales Forecast. This is a very important uh, document which we will go over um, later after this video. Section six is management, and in this section, you're going to talk about who's going to be managing the business on a day to day basis. We should mention that. What experience does that bring? Uh, describe the organizational structures. Are you going to be hiring more than one person? If yes, then you need to include their roles, their responsibilities, and their resumes. لازم نوفر طبعا معلومات عن اللي بن بنوظفهم في الشركة. Seventh section is the most important one, which is the financial plan. And for this, you need three main um, documents: the cash flow, which talks about inflows and outflows of cash. Uh, the second is profit and loss, which is um, how much your company made or lost over a period of time. And the balance sheet, which is a snapshot of your business position. The final section is the appendix. And in this one, you basically put any supporting documents like brochures, industry studies, maps, articles, and market research. Okay, so now that we know all the sections to a business plan and why we need it, um, now's the time to actually start working on our own business plan. So I have created for you a template that is available for you to use freely. It's very easy to fill. Um, you'll find a couple of pages here on the side uh, and we have all the different sections that we talked about. So we have the executive summary, the company overview, the products, the market analysis, the strategy, uh, the management, the financial plan and the appendix. So we're just going to start filling it in very quickly. So let's just pretend we're coming up um, or our business plan is for a bakery. So I'm just going to call it Yummy Bakery. The owners or owner is, uh, let's say, Yusuf A. These are my kids' names, so I'm just putting them as owners. And then um, you're going to just fill out as much information as you can in terms of address, if you have an address that you've, um, you know, um, secured or not, what the phone is and the email address. Okay, so very basic. You could, if you have a logo ready, you could also include that here or a picture, um, or you could just leave it uh, blank. فطبعاً هاي هي خطة العمل. بتكون عندكم متوفرة لنتنزلونها على الكمبيوتر وتشتغلوا عليها بروحكم هي وايد سهلة وحطيتنا فيها كل الأجزاء اللي تكلمنا عنها مساعة و yeah okay so for the executive summary although this is the first uh, section you're actually going to have to write this last this is because once you fill out all the other sections then you can actually write a summary on the other sections and um, fill, fill this section up. So write the section last. This section should be a page, no longer than two. And um, imagine that you have five minutes to describe what your business is. And um, this is where you're going to describe it. So you're going to talk about quickly about, uh, you know, your company, what are the products or services you're going to provide, uh, who will you be selling to, who are your market, who are your customers, what are your short-term girls and what makes you unique? So for example, in, in our yummy... OK, 
Okay, so let's go on to the next section. So this is the company overview. So this describes what your company is. So if let's say I'm going to create this bakery and it's just um, I own it by myself or we have the two partners which we mentioned earlier. So we're going to say um, yummy bakery will be a partnership between Y and S. Okay, um, then it says here ownership, there's more than one owner, what are the percentages? So let's talk about Y will own, let's say, 55% of the company and S will own 45% of the company. Are there any key employees? You know, who's going to be managing? So we can say Y will be managing the day day operations while S will be in charge of marketing and business development. The location and facilities, since this is a bakery, let's just fix this typing. Since this is a bakery, is it going to be accepting customers or is it just going to be doing deliveries and orders? So that will also make a difference in what kind of location uh, you're looking for. Let's say this company or this uh, bakery is just doing delivery. So, you know, location was found in an industrial area with low rent due to the business only doing deliveries. And then the mission statement. So, yummy bakery will be the premium bakery for so here is where you think about what will make your business unique so is it about customizing cakes or you know doing cakes that are only for certain diets so this is what you can talk about here for for example gluten free cakes and snacks so for the startup expenses uh, we have a sheet uh, that's called startup plan that I'm going to show you right okay, now. So this is the startup plan sheet. Um, it looks a little overwhelming, but um, it's very clear in terms of it lists any expenses that you might have incurred before starting your business. فهني طبعا نقدر نسجل كل المصاريف والتكاليف اللي واجهناها قبل لنفتح المشروع فطبعا هني إذا في مثلا أوفيس ليس ساعات في عقود أجور لازم الواحد يدفع مثلا بشهر شهرين ثلاثة قبل حتى يأخذ اللي يستلم المحل فالأوفيس ليس here would include any amount or any fees that you've paid you know to secure your location leasehold improvement so this is basically um, you know you got the unit and you want to fix it or paint it or fix the carpet or um, so this is what goes here so uh, website stationary business identity now you're not going to be filling all of these up some of them are not applicable at this stage that's fine the important thing is that you need to capture all the information all the costs all the expenses um, that you um, have incurred or that you will incur so whether they things that you've spent or things that you expect to spend so so these are these are the costs that you need right before operating or they're also called pre-operating costs um, you know will you need inventory do you need legal expenses uh, stationary marketing all of these things need to be identified and you know you have the total here and then you will also need cash as you when you start up you're not gonna start making money and covering your cost from day one so you also have to factor in three months, six months, um, some businesses even factor in a whole year of how much money they need to pay their expenses and that's the amount of cash that they need to factor in. So here for example we have 10,000 dinars, let's assume you know our costs on a monthly basis once we operate are 1,000 dinars a month, that means we need 10 months worth of cash to make sure that we can pay off our expenses. These are the startup assets. So when you say total requirements, you're actually adding up the expenses. You're you're adding up how much cash you need and if you need other assets. 
and this is how much money you need to start your business now in terms of where you're gonna get this money from so let's say 30,000 is from the two owners and then um, you know if they need bank loans back sorry bank loans this that needs to go there or if there are other loans that they want to incur like credit cards or any other uh, facility so then the total source of funds obviously here has to match here so you make sure that you have all the money all the funds that you need to start your business okay so now that we talked about the startup plan this you need to put, put your startup expenses here as a summary and then the actual startup plan document will go as an appendix at the end which I will cover but this is where that number will go um, as part of this section number two which says comp company overview so the, this gives an idea to your potential partners investors banks if you're going to be seeking uh, business loans this tells them how much money uh, you need uh, pre-startup pre or pre-operating. So section three here basically is just lists products and services. So in our case, let's say, um, so products and services at Yummy Bakery. So what are they going to be? Um, what you could talk about also is, you know, your short term and then if you have any plans in the future where you want to introduce other things as well. So we're going to start by saying, for example, uh, products are gluten free cakes, customizable cakes, gluten free snacks. So obviously um, there are no services at Yama Bakery, just products. So this is, um, you know, short term. And then if we want to say products long term, so what we could do is maybe have stocking at supermarkets, um, partnerships with other food providers. So you can just talk about, you can just imagine what are the, what are the, um, ways that you can expand how your product uh, or how far your product goes. فهني طبعا بنتكلم عن الخدمات والمنتجات من من ناحية اليامي بيكري اللي احنا بنسويه uh, طبعا ما في خدمات كلها منتجات فأول شي بنقول الproducts اللي بيكونون short term اللي هما خلال سنة أو سنتين gluten free cakes, customizable cakes, gluten free snacks بعدين uh, long term اللي هو شنو ممكن اللي نسويه عقب ثلاث إلى خمس سنوات okay. ال pricing strategy طبعا في um, ثلاثة أنواع من ال pricing strategies uh, there are three types of pricing strategy there's a customer value based, there's a competition based and there's a cost based what that means is basically when you when you're doing your market research and when you for example just going to the supermarket and you see gluten-free products immediately that price of these products are is, is more expensive why is that maybe because you know they have to use more expensive ingredients their process is a little different um, than you baking conventional you know products with conventional ingredients so the value that people perceive or is is more so that way do we just price it more because it's gluten free or do we see you know what our competitors are doing and then um, price it accordingly so if we have a competitor that prices 15 dinars for a cake do I price it at 16 or 14 or do I price it at 20 or we do with cost based so we see how much this product costs so let's say if it costs us five dinars to make do we add a margin of let's say 30 percent and then that's the that's the price so these are the things that we have to think about when we're setting the price uh, strategy. And then the life cycle. So, you know, as the life cycle, there are four stages that we, we talked about earlier. There's the introduction, um, and then there's growth, there's maturity, and then there's the decline. So we need to also plan for where our product will be throughout the years in short term and long term. Once the product starts to mature, we need to introduce other products to kind of keep the, the revenue uh, continuously flowing. So that's for this third section. Now we talk about market analysis, which is section four, and this is where you need to do a lot of research. Research could be simply you know, online research. You could do 
Google uh, form surveys or questionnaires. A lot of people actually fill those out, believe it or not. They like to give their opinion. Um, and then you need to just be able to describe who are you targeting? Are you targeting everybody with this bakery? Are you targeting people that, for example, only go to gyms and you know they're very careful about what they eat and uh, their diet? Or is it only, you're only targeting uh, schools um, and their students? So you need to understand who's your target market. طبعا وايد مهم ان احنا نحدد او نعرف من الفئه او الشريحه اللي في السوق اللي احنا بنبي نبيع لها فممكن ان نبحث اونلاين او مجرد نسوي استبيان في معلومات وايد ممكن ان يعني نجمعها حق حق هالسكشن So the size of the primary target market, if it's, let's say, you know, we want only or we're targeting um, diet conscious people who are vegan, who are um, all these different characteristics, and we ended up having a very small target market, is that even worth creating this business for? Maybe not. So we need to also find out how big is our target market? Um, you know and will it would it grow and how much market share can you gain so if there are other um, competitors out there how much how popular are they and how much can you take from that uh, market share and then obviously com- competition is also a very healthy thing to have in the in the, in the um, economic environment so you need to at least understand who your competitors are and then see how um, where you fit uh, do they have gaps or areas that they're not doing very well at and that's where you can um, you know set up or or target these are the things that you need to be aware of when you're doing your market analysis now section five is basically the strategy and implementation طبعا في الاستراتيجي ممكن في يعني عدة أشياء اللي هو في الماركتينج استراتيجي أو الاستراتيجية التسويق اللي هني لازم نعرف شلون بنوصل حق فئة فئة السوق اللي إحنا أو الشريحة اللي إحنا نبيها هل مجرد بيكون أونلاين بالتلف يعني إيميل أو بيكون شيء مطبوعة بالجرايد بالبوردز اللي في الشارع أو public relations Um, so how do we, how are we going to communicate with our customers? So here we talk about, for example, marketing strategy. Uh, yummy Bakery will um, target its customers through, for example, social media channels activated at or prior to launch, like Instagram. Um, TikTok, for example, that's really popular. Uh, Snapchat, etc. Okay, um, maybe they would have uh, cooking competitions. So, come uh, cooking competitions to spread the word. Um, they would maybe invite the newspapers to get free tasting. So, invite newspapers um, for tasting. So these are some of the things that we can uh, think about or write in the marketing strategy. For the sales strategy, now there are um, a couple of things we have to think of. Uh, so will we have a sales force? Do we need salesmen or, or saleswomen or maybe not at this stage? But if we do, then we need to include that and we need to also mention you know, how are we going to recruit them, how are we going to train them, how are we going to compensate them, things like that. This also depends obviously on the type of business that you're working on. So for a bakery, Um, that won't be necessary. Um, so sales activity. So when you're defining your sales strategy, what, how will you be able to make sales? Are you going to be calling people? Or again, your sales strategy could also be very much linked to your marketing strategy, which, you know, when you do all these marketing campaigns, then that's how you get people interested and then you start um, selling. Sales forecast. Now, this is also a Google Sheet um, that we have created for you called Sales Forecast, and we'll go through it and explain to you how that works. Okay, so for this sheet, the Sales Forecast, uh, basically what this shows you is how much you're forecasting for the first year of operations, and then for the next four years, you're doing annual, um, so total sales for one year. So Again, 
don't feel like this is overwhelming it's it looks like a lot of information but it's very easy to fill out so you're gonna put your company name here so we're gonna say yummy bakery and then let's assume that we're starting operations january 2021 or let's say we'll start operations october 2020 and then you'll see here that it automatically um, updates all the months for you so let's assume that we're just having you know a total of two products so what we're gonna do here is I'm assuming that for so for product one for example let's say gluten free cake or let's just say GF cake I'm estimating that for the first month I'm gonna be selling 20 okay then I'm gonna be selling 40 then we're gonna sell 80 in month three and then we'll just hopefully get really really busy and then what's the price per unit so let's say it's the average price is 15 dinars and then you'll see that it automatically starts to calculate it for you and then let's say it's 15 again here so you're just going to enter the price the quantity and it's going to automatically sum it up for you and then these are your monthly totals now some of the information has already been filled feel free to delete columns or add as you see fit but just make sure that the formulas here um, remain accurate so just just be aware of that so these sales forecasts basically so you have for the whole year this is how much you're expecting year two you're expecting this much year three and so on and so forth so this puts things in perspective for you so you can always play with the numbers you can build different assumptions for example let's say um, March of next year is Ramadan so will sales drop or increase summertime you know July August what happens to sales some businesses actually do better in the summer some don't so you can always include you know seasonality um, different occasions back to school in September are there lots of cakes being ordered maybe not October yes it's a busy month so have a have a think of all the different occasions the seasonalities all the different um, uh, you know seasons and and how can that affect your your sales numbers so now that we've understood how the sales forecast uh, sheet works then you'd need to plug in the uh, numbers here you could just do a table that says you know month 1 to month 12 or you could just do year by year but again this is important to tell your uh, partners or your potential lenders how you see your money um, coming in so for section 6 this is basically uh, the management so um, who will be running the, the business day to day what experience do they bring what are their special or um, you know competencies uh, we talked about earlier that I think it was why where did it where did we say that I think it was sorry yes so why will um, be managing the day-to-day -day operations and S will be in charge of marketing and business development so I'm just gonna copy that and paste it here okay so why holds a degree in marketing from the University of X there his experience includes um, project management at company A, B, C, etc. And then S holds a master's degree from the University of RTY and her experience includes etc so here you know you fill out um, who's going to be managing if you're planning on hiring people who will you be hiring so a yummy bakery will hire two chefs and one driver 
for example. So this is the section on management. Now, if you've noticed, there's not really a lot. We don't, you don't have to fill out pages and pages of data. This plan just puts things in perspective for you and just makes sure that you've covered all the important points. So now for the financial plan, which is the most important um, uh, section in this entire business plan. And I'm going to show you the three templates that we have. Uh, so we have cash flow statement, profit and loss, and then the balance sheet. All right. So the cash flow statement is one of the most important financial statements that you can come across. Uh, it basically outlines all the cash coming in and all the cash coming out and at the end of the month you know how much cash that you can actually carry over or move with you to the next uh, month so this really puts things in perspective for you so you know whether you have enough money to pay your expenses the following month so um, I'm just going to go through some of these examples very quickly. Again, not all these lines would be applicable to you, but it's a good, a good way to just capture all the possible cash receipts, cash coming in, and then cash being paid, cash going out. And obviously, you're always going to want it to be a positive uh, cash flow. If it's negative, then that means you've spent more than you can afford. Um, so the cash at the beginning of the month so if you remember when we talked about the pre um, or the startup plan we talked that we had 35,000 so that's the number that gets plugged in here um, and then we start basically planning out you know this is how much cash we have on hand and this is where we start paying out a lot of the expenses that we need to when we start the business so we have rent uh, legal fees, you know, accounting, um, or sorry, professional fees. We have, um, you know, um, so these two totals, uh, total cash, cash paid out was 10,000. So we have 25,000 um, at the end of that month. That amount starts back here. So if you see the formula, actually, um, this is linked to uh, this uh, number. So your whatever you end with on that month, the next month is your opening balance. So you have 25,000 in cash, and then you have cash sales of 10,000 that month. Then you have, um, you know, total cash is this plus this, which is 35, and then you start reporting all the different purchases and expenses that you've incurred that you've paid cash for. So it would be merchandise or uh, wages, which is, you know, very big um, expense for any business or salaries. Uh, payroll expenses so you know in Bahrain's terms for example we would have LMRA costs uh, social uh, insurance SIO um, things like that supplies rent utilities utilities includes electricity water municipality um, things like that uh, insurance telephone obviously you know if you have if you need an internet connection or any other telecom would would go under there and that's what you do. You you basically forecast um, month on month and just you, you have a better idea of how much cash you have at the end of each month. So if you see here for this month, there was a lot of total cash paid out. So we had very little uh, balance left compared to the previous month. And then that 1,200 goes here as opening, but then we made 60,000 in sales. So that's that's just how it goes month on month. So that's the um, cash flow. And again, at the end of the year, you just get you total up the total in minus total out, and then it gives you your cash flow. OK, so the second financial statement that is very um, important to your business is the income statement. It's also called um, profit, or profit and loss, which is basically exactly what it means. It's how much money you made and what are the costs that were incurred and then um, it breaks it down into um, you know all the different categories and it tells you whether you made a um, you know profit or a, a loss and again this is a month on month uh, plan and then you sum it up at the end of the year so your sales here if you remember when we did our sales plan this is where the that number would you would plug it in so whatever sales forecast you've done for all the different months of operations you would take those numbers and then you would fit them here 
or plug them back in here. So for January, your sales forecast was 90,000, February, March, April. So in Bahrain or, you know, almost everywhere in the world, um, the financial year is January to December. So let's say, you know, in this case of Yummy Bakery, we started operations in October. So you would have to fill out October, November, December, and you would have a profit and loss statement for just that quarter or, you know, three months. But then the following year, 2021, you would have it for the full year. So an income statement, again, just shows you how much revenue you're making or you plan on making. How much How much does it cost to actually make this money so if you're if, if it's a bakery you need you know what what is called a cost of goods sold or cost of sales so you need these costs enable in in order to you know sell these products and make money so in the case of the bakery you would need flour you would need eggs and sugar and chocolate and all the different ingredients that go into the bakery so that would be materials labor would be again the um cost of the wages or the salaries lease um so without rent can you operate of course you can't so that goes under cost of goods sold so these are basically the say the costs that are directly linked to sales the more you sell the more labor um you would uh have to pay for the more materials you have to buy and I know rent kind of doesn't make sense, but here, this example, it just says directly related to production. So in this example, uh, you know, it's a, it's a manufacturing um, company, and if they produce more, they actually need to rent out more area. So that's that's what it, that means. But again, it would not be applicable to you. And then expenses are your expenses that occur whether you know you sell or you don't. And these are usually, you know, problematic for a lot of businesses, especially when they're starting up. So salaries, benefits, rent, all the all the things that there, it's, it's quite similar to what we also showed in the cash flow. But this just um, this actually helps you compare month on month, um, you know, how much your salaries are changing and how much your rent is changing and, and all of these. So profit and loss or income statements is the same thing is another um important um, financial plan that you need to keep track of. So the last uh, financial plan or statement that we're going to talk about today is the balance sheet. It's also called the pro forma balance sheet. And basically this lists your financial position as a company. Um, again, I know it sounds a little uh, overwhelming, but it basically lists all your assets and then your liabilities. So what you owe and then also the owner's equity or the ownership capital. So let me just explain that to you um, a little bit further. So in terms of assets, um, you ca there are two categories, or there's plenty actually, but the current assets. So these can include cash, accounts receivable, inventory supplies, prepaid expenses, and then fixed assets. So these are the things that you've purchased um, or paid for, um, you know, in terms of your location, uh, any equipment, uh, vehicles if you've purchased. Again, not all these sections are could be applicable to you. It could be just that you have cash. You don't have accounts receivable, which basically means money that people owe you. The way your business runs is people pay and they get the service. They don't get the service and then pay after three months or six months like you know a construction company would, for example, uh, do. So some of these categories would not be applicable to you inventory supplies and then prepaid expenses is basically if you were to pay for rent in advance uh, that's a prepaid expense and that's actually um, considered a current asset and then you fill it out with property uh, leasehold improvements equipment things like that you total that up and that would be your total fixed assets and then we have a look at liabilities and basically you know how much do you owe in terms of short-term loans for example any any amount that's payable um, payroll that's been um, pending that hasn't been paid before uh, things like that again as a small business you may not have any liabilities or you may just have the bank loan that um, you have requested to be able to start up your business and that would fall under long-term uh, liabilities or long-term debt and then you would total that up and then so basically it's a formula so it's assets is liabilities um, plus owner's equity so that's what um, in, in accounting you know that always has to balance 
um, so you'll find that actually that once you fill out all your assets and your liabilities um, the, the, the difference would be equal to your ownership for this sheet usually it's better that an, an accountant helps you or a financial advisor because depending on how you know things are classified that could just affect the whole balance sheet so for this I would really advise um, you to either you know find software that categorizes these for you like you know there are plenty of free options out there like zero and um, QuickBooks or just seek advice from a local um, accounting or auditing firm but this is again uh, the balance sheet that you need as part of your uh, business plan so we've talked about the three types of financial plans that you need to prepare for cash flow profit and loss and balance sheet and all of these are going to be available for you as templates that you can customize as per your requirements but تكلمنا عن هالثلاثة أنواع من financial plans وبيكونون الملفات موجودين لكم عشان تنزلونهم وتستخدمونهم في خطة مشروعكم and now to the final section of this video tutorial which is the support system that the businesses are very lucky to have in Bahrain in terms of government and non-government entities البيئة طبعا التشجيعية اللي عندنا في البحرين حق الشركات الصغيرة واللي بتتأسس ما شاء الله يعني نحسد عليها عندنا فئات أو جهات حكومية وغير حكومية مثل بحرين Economic Development Board تمكين تنمو بنك بحرين Development Bank and we have um, all these great facilities that make starting a business in Bahrain uh, easy and uh, convenient So this brings me to the end of this tutorial. I would like to wish you all the best in this amazing journey. Enjoy the ride and good luck. Thank you for listening and thank you to Al-Mabar Al-Khalifiyah for this opportunity.